Home Goods is full of tacky, dated, and poorly made pieces. I hate to admit it, but Home Goods also has stylish, incredibly high quality, trendy pieces that you definitely want to bring home. But how do we spot these Home Goods hidden gems? In today's video, I'm going to walk through every single aisle of Home Goods and teach you exactly how to spot those designer inspired pieces that you should take home. And I'm going to tell you exactly what to avoid the next time you go searching and shopping. Before we get into today's video, please don't forget to subscribe, but let's head to home goods. We are starting today's video in the decorative accent. So you want to look for items that are practical and stylish. So by practical, I mean they are functional. They serve a function to you. So that could be something as simple as a vase. Um, a vase is something that can hold flowers or something like that. So you should pick it up, but maybe avoid things that can't actually hold those florals or serve another purpose. I tend to see these vases that have like open portions to it, or they're so curved that you can't actually fit flowers in them. And then that says to me, I can't actually style them very easily so I may want to leave them at the store. Same thing goes with a lot of sculptures. I love sculpture, don't get me wrong, but sculpture is something you may want to actually buy from an artist and let it have some significance to you because I often find that people buy these sculptures from home goods and don't actually know how to style them and they don't have another function right, they don't hold anything. So what is that sculpture doing? Maybe avoid these altogether. I would urge you to stick to trays and boxes and bowls. They can always hold lots of your mess. I love to use bowls for my keys, for my mail. Um, things like that. They're also great for holding remotes. So look out for these when you are at home goods. Another thing I see people buy at home goods that you may want to avoid is the bookend. Unless you have bookshelves, you really have no use for a bookend. So leave it at the store. They tend to have tons of them, but a lot of people now read on their Kindles. So that's just some food for thought. And when it comes to finding metal items, hammered metals tend to look more sophisticated and they look more contemporary and modern. So go for those hammered metals, whether it be gold, silver, pewter, otherwise, it just looks so much more luxe and they don't scratch quite as much. So they're going to be more durable over time. I also want to touch on coffee table books. You want to avoid ones with super busy covers if you intend to put decor on top of them, because that means the colors of that cover are going to clash with your decor. So unless you're eclectic, it becomes a little bit more difficult to style with. So minimal is best. You also want to remove the dust cover and assess the book itself because if the dust cover gets ruined, say you spill something on it, you'll want to make sure that you can still use that book. So take the dust cover off and look at it. And you'll want to stick to the larger books instead of the smaller ones. The smaller ones look cute, but they're really difficult to style with. So unless you just want to read it, which of course you should buy it if you want to read it, maybe just leave it at the store. Blankets are my favorite section of home goods, and this is where you're going to need a lot of tips. First of all, you kind of want to avoid all of the faux fur um, in general. It is very difficult to wash. It hides a lot of crumbs and they're just kind of overdone to be completely honest. They're not really hidden gems. You can get them from anywhere. And honestly, you can tend to get them a lot cheaper on Amazon. So that's where I'd buy them if that's the style that I want. You also want to avoid blankets with loops or loose knits if you have pets because their nails will actually get stuck in those fibers and rip them apart. And you want to buy things that are durable and realistic for your lifestyle. With that being said, we do want to have fringing, stitching, details, and pattern. It just really elevates the design. I love the fringing. Um, I think it just takes the design to the next level. It's very similar to what we see with rugs, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. So be sure to keep on watching. Materials wise, you can actually find cashmere wool and cotton blends at home goods you very rarely find 100 of any of these things but these blends are absolutely divine they feel nice and you know they look good and you want to make sure something feels good too because you're going to be napping with these so you don't want something super scratchy that you hate against your skin but you also want to make sure that you have the capacity to wash these things at home um, without them shedding everywhere again that's why i tend to avoid the faux fur because they just kind of fall apart in the washing machine which i despise The blanket section is right next to the pillows. And when it comes to pillows, you want to avoid the printed on patterns. They do not look good. You want to be able to feel the different pattern. You want there to be difference um, in the textures across the pillow. It just makes it feel a little bit more luxurious. You always, always want to do that. Thank you. 
You also want to look for tassels and fringe when relevant. Not every pillow has to have that. It really depends on the design style, but we want to have texture somewhere. Anything marked with feathered fill tends to be more comfortable and luxurious feeling, feeling and feathered filled pieces just are a little bit more expensive. So you tend to get a higher quality pillow cover, but if you do not want feather filled for ethical reasons or otherwise, um, you can always switch out the insert when you get home. Always make sure that the zipper is very well hidden. And if it's not well hidden, you want it to be the same color as the pillowcase because zippers can really stick out like a sore thumb. And speaking of the design, you want to ideally have a pillow that pattern goes all the way around the pillow, but that can be kind of expensive for those manufacturers. So they tend to have them on one side. So instead of going for like the bland underside, you actually want to make sure that the backside is at least the same color or an ode to the front design, just so that it feels cohesive and you don't have to be so particular about how you style those pillows. Artwork is my favorite section of home goods. You always want to make sure that the artwork is embellished, meaning that it has some texture on it you also want to make sure that there is a different texture and color when it comes to the frame mat and painting itself um, this is a great example of that i think it looks so incredibly high end and that's because it's giving me different things it's very layered in terms of its design another way to find an elevated piece at home goods is just to look for a piece that is matted matted artworks look so much more high end they always do matted artworks um, in museums and in design shops so you want to look for that at home goods goods as well if you're going for any type of like print or something that is not on canvas of course you're not looking for a matted canvas and I do want to say that Also, if you're buying a piece that it is in a frame and it has some glass, you actually want to hold that up and make sure that the glass isn't too reflective um, so that if you have lights in your home and they're shining, they're not totally disrupting your ability to see that artwork super well. Now this is what you do want to avoid art printed on acrylic. It just is too shiny. It looks printed. There's no dimension there. I would avoid this altogether 100% unless it really speaks to you. Of course, buy things that do make you happy. And while I do love these dog paintings, I think they're cute. They just never really look sophisticated. So I would leave them at the store. I very briefly want to touch on mirrors. You want to look at how those mirrors hang to make sure that that is practical for your home. When it comes to those wooden mirrors, I think you really can't go wrong. Um, make sure it's solid wood tap it listen to it but i love ones with curves and textures like this these looks are straight out of the soho home catalog but at a fraction of the price let's talk lighting so you want to avoid lamps with those metal bases i think they just don't look as sophisticated i think you have a beautiful design and then you're like what is this why did you add this the only time i would get a metal base is when i'm looking for a light that has like a usb in it of course just like decorative accents matte lamps tend to look a little bit more modern and a little bit more rustic than the glossy ones so just take your design style into consideration when you're shopping for the lamps. Neither is inherently good or bad. They just fit for different styles and the glossy ones tend to be a little bit more affordable and therefore look a little bit more cheap. Of course, any type of lampshade is fine, but I think Empire lampshades look the most luxurious. You can also experiment with pleated, stitch, and atypical lampshades for a more luxe look, but keep in mind that these tend to require a little bit more dusting, so just make sure that you can keep up with that lifestyle-wise. Also, look for clear cords. Clear cords blend into the background more. Of course, you're going to do cord management, but we can only do so much. So go for clear cords as opposed to white or black cords because those really, really, really stick out and they're just plain ugly. I also find it so much more fruitful to go for larger, thicker lamps because they prevent you from having to buy more decor to style whatever surface they're going on and they really, truly pack a punch. Also, if you can find lamps that are sculptural in nature, those are going to be your best friends because they act as kind of like a vase with the sculpture or like a sculpture and they illuminate a space. So it's truly a twofer.
The best piece of advice I can give you when it comes to furniture is to look up the brand names. Just use Google. There is no rush. Google that brand name online and see what the reviews are like. If you can't find the brand name, what you can do is actually take a picture of that item and use Google Lens to reverse image search it and find that piece of furniture online. This will let you know who it's made by, what the ratings of it are, and how other people have styled it to make sure it's something that you actually want to bring home. You also want to do the wobble test and make sure something isn't going to fall over. This can be such a hazard for you if this is a piece of furniture that you're going to sit on because it could break under someone's weight and that is super dangerous. You also want to make sure that these accents can actually hold up to the decor you're sitting on top of them, your drinks, your feet, whatever it is you're going to use that thing for. When it comes to side tables, you actually want to have side tables that are a little bit more closed. I often find ones like these that are super open. Um, they kind of just disappear into the design and offer no storage and no sculptural aspect. Instead, I want to go for ones like these. They look like sculptures. They really contribute to the design and I can use it for my drinks, decor, whatever. And you want to look for ones that are super heavy again, just so that they pass that wobble test. Now let's talk rugs. We actually want to avoid rugs with that plastic backing. Um, they don't tend to be as thick and you can just buy a rug pad to avoid it from slipping. You also want to make sure that your rug has a lot of detail. The more detail you can see in the rug, the more effort they went into the production of that rug, which is very important. And I've said this before, but I hate printed rugs. I do not care for them. So if you can avoid them altogether, avoid them. Brands that I commonly see in home goods that are super high quality are Laloy and Lemieux. So Look out for those and look out for collections by designers that you know. So Justina Blakeney, she is the founder of Jungla. You've seen Jungla at Target. We recognize her, so we might bring this rug home because we know who this is. The thicker piles look more sophisticated, so the thicker the rug is, the more likely it is that it is high quality. So I would tell you to definitely, definitely bring those home. And they really bolster the design. I hate when a rug is so thin that it just kind of slides and it barely contributes anything to the design. Plus it doesn't feel nice on my feet. And that's what a rug is all about. Last but not least, you wanna rub yourself on the rugs to assess the shedding. So just do that little test. Last but not least, I want to talk about candles. When it comes to candles, brand names are everything. Home Goods is full of candles that smell really good when you smell them super up close, but when you light them when you get home, they don't smell at all and they're not super cheap. So unless you know the brand name like Capri Blue or Nest, I'm going to tell you to leave these candles at the store. When it comes to candlesticks, you want to make sure that they're not wobbly, so do the wobble test. And you want to make sure that you can actually style them. Again, the hammered metals look best, and they tend to have many dupes for Crate and Barrel and Pottery Barn when it comes to the candlesticks. So just look online and look for those designer items to see if you can find those dupes here at Home Goods. Okay, you guys, that is it for today's video. You know exactly how to find those hidden gems in home goods the next time you go shopping. Did you learn anything new in today's video? Do you have a tip that I didn't cover? Be sure to let me know it down in the comments. Now, if you are an at-home designer and you wanna take your designs to the next level, be sure to check out my course, Design It In A Day, which I've linked it down below in the description box, and you can use the code YouTube for 20% off. But thank you so much for watching today's video, and until next time, have a beautiful day.